place in uh, Washington State called Spar Shop, which happens to have uh, the largest wooden spar lathe in the world. And actually, I don't know, somebody was reading the Wooden Boat magazine. Is there a Wooden Boat magazine uh, bouncing around in here? Weren't yeah, you reading it? Back it? So. Put it back. Uh, I'll go. It, can you go get that, Dave? Because it has pictures of the lathe. They featured the, the, the lathe that uh, those guys used in the, in the recent article. Um, a log like this, to buy it, is like $2,500 if you just buy the tree. If you can get it for free and time is not a factor, you get it for free. Uh, in this particular case, time was a major factor and we needed to be able to buy the log very early in the process so we would have it in time. Um, because there's always like purchasing problems, delivery problems, and what manufacturing kind of time. That's uh, Douglas fir. <coughs> the original, the mass we took out was white pine. Right. And it's perfectly serviceable. It was actually a nicer tree than this one except for the sapwood issues. Uh, Douglas fir is the spar stock of choice in big boats. Um, so we purchased this stick from a shipyard in Washington State, and I said they have this giant spar lathe. What they actually did is take the entire log, cut it square, and then they chuck it into this lathe. Uh, and if he finds the magazine, you can see pictures of it, uh, about four feet in the air, and they have the lathe set on railroad tracks, and then traveling cars, and there's this giant shaper head that travels along uh, railroad tracks parallel with the lathe and cuts to the final dimension in one pass, no matter what the width is, cuts to the final dimension, finished. Smooth, better than, better than you can finish it in the shop. Like you sand it and to... And it's spinning like a regular lathe, the whole line uh, is rolling. They can cut, depending on the log, the, sun, the diameter, they can cut eight to 10 feet a day, finished. Completely. But I mean the whole log itself is rolling. The whole rolling. log is spinning. Wow. The car is traveling down the track and the cutter head is adjustable. It's actually a tracer lathe. Uh, so the cutter head rides as a, uh, an indicator rod that rides on a, a steel beam that's on the other side of the lathe. And that you set that steel beam to the shape you want and the cutter head just touches that and rides down the, rides down the log and moves in or out depending on what you want. Uh, it's very cool. Um, there was just an article in the most re recent Wooden Boat magazine about this particular lathe because they're setting up the cut reputedly the largest wood turn, the largest wooden spar ever turned by man. Uh, they're going to make like a 130 foot mast and every mast of that's like over 100 feet has always been done by hand apparently. Nobody's ever put one in a lathe that size. Yes sir? Uh, is the wood green or do you kill and dry it? Um, Trees are green. So um, they don't, yeah, they're, it's cut green then. Ah, uh, correct, yes. Uh, in fact, the boat, everything you put in the, gro in the boat uh, when you're building it is either green or air dried, which is effectively almost green, yeah. dried for X amount of time. Uh, this particular thing, we unpacked it. When it got here, it was, you touched it, it was like squishing moisture out. But it's not a problem because solid spars have been used in wooden boats for millennia, and they're all green when they're made. They're all that way. Yes, sir? You, you mentioned that this new mast is of a different wood variety than the Correct. old one, and I see that you're replacing the keel. How do you consider the different densities of new versus old in the weight and balance of the boat? Or do you, uh, you do some. I mean, this the Douglas fir weighs, a, a green Douglas fir of this size weighs pounds different than a white pine. So the density is very close together then? Correct. Uh, and whatever problem there is, you can take it up with more or less ballast, although you don't actually want to get into that because the Coast Guard monitors that too. And you're, there's actually, uh, you when you get the boat certified for passenger carrying stat status, you actually couldn't find it. Uh, it's in the beginning. It's on the blog too. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, you actually do a stability test and a bunch of calculations on the boat to prove that it is capable of taking people out safely without capsizing. And that's part of, you know, when you relaunch it or before you relaunch it, oh, there, there's a, either additional ballast or other measures taken to... Uh, in this case, we won't be messing with the ballast, but I mean, you just effectively say that the... Here's pictures of the lathe, actually. If you, if, 
anybody wants to see it. Um, you effectively say that it's going to be so close it's not going to matter. Okay. And not only that, but you put anywhere from five to 25 people on the boat, and the weight changes. You know, you put supplies on and off right. the boat. All okay. that is factored into the whole process. <laughs> uh, the keel effectively weighs what it was. Uh, this mask might weigh a little bit more, um, but it's not necessarily an issue. Um, so when we bought this mask, we bought it already turned to the proper taper, and all I had to do was cut this eight-sided, these eight facets on the bottom that the other mask had, cut the mortise, or cut the tenon for the, um, uh, the mortise and the keel, and mount the hardware on the top. Wow. The reason we did this uh, was not only to save time, but it actually uh, is effectively almost the same cost as doing it yourself, unless you can find the tree for free. If you can find the tree for free, you can save that money. But going from the tree to the mast takes X amount of hours, whether somebody else does it or whether I do it. And this particular, the price we got on this stick already turned was fantastic and saved me a week of work. And that was effectively right there at the price that it would have cost if I did it all myself and we bought the stick. You know? uh, so all we had to pay was transport, which we were already paying. Um, and it was three and a half days to go from the round stick to the finished mat, barring the paint, to go to the point where the hardware was fitted and everything was cut. So it was super efficient. Super you efficient. said it was, it was seeping moisture when you unwrapped it. <coughs> uh, how was it when you went to prime it and varnish it? Uh, this is not varnished. That is linseed oil, turpentine, and pine tar, traditional mixture okay. used on traditional boats which is designed to not only protect the wood, but slow down the drying process. Uh, when I chopped the mast that we took out of the boat into eight foot sections, it was completely green inside. Uh, ten years later. Uh, there's stories, I don't know anybody who's done it in modern times, uh, because you can never afford to, that um, the way they used to preserve masts back in the days when there were a lot of sailing ships is they would take the sticks, peel the bark off, and sink them in a salt pond for like 10 years. Uh, and by doing that, they would allow the cell, the salt water to impregnate the cell structure on the outside of the log. And that would <coughs> prevent the log from drying out too quickly and sort of destroying itself or tearing itself apart or checking uh, when um, you made a mast out of it. But nobody has the time to do that today. Uh, so what we do is what they would have done anyway after making it, uh, which is we just treated it with linseed oil, turpentine, and pine tar, and that the mixture is designed to like, in theory, drive in, drive the pine tar and the linseed oil into the cell, surface cell structure of the wood and keep the cells from collapsing mm -hmm. and tearing themselves apart when the thing dries out. And the white part? Uh, it was all treated that way, like seven coats or eight coats to the point where it couldn't take it anymore, and in order to paint it, we had to scrape it back off again. Uh, and that um, effectively guarantees, or not guarantees, but really slows down the whole drying process and makes it much better. And then the paint that we put on it was mixed with that same mixture because it's a traditional paint to sort of be um, cooperative with it, so to speak. Uh, and we just let that dry out. You know, the first coat of paint went on and it was like a week later before we painted it again. Mm -hmm. And we had to get like six coats of paint on it before we could even sand it, before the paint would actually kick off the layers underneath it. But mm -hmm. the whole point of that is to build a coating that protects it really well, you know. Bill. Do, in some places on the spar blades, do they have the cut ahead rotating, powered cut ahead? Yeah, this one is a rotating shaper head that's oh, at okay. an angle and they can adjust the angle. So like, you know, if the log is this big and they're cutting to this dimension, they just drive it in and turn it, and it cuts off that, and it just disregards everything outside of where it's cutting, and it all falls off in huge chunks, apparently. No, I got the impression that the cutter head wasn't powered, and the, and the mass was spinning. The, is, it, the mass is spinning, too. Oh, well, yes, but not right. Not at, not at a high speed that you would need to. It, it, the article there shows, uh, it says that apparently there's a guy riding on 